Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be reviewing the Deuter Climber 22 liter kids backpack. As our kids have gotten more ambitious and our trips have gotten longer and we've spent more time out and we've traveled more distance, we've run into a problem that a 12 liter backpack simply isn't large enough to carry the supplies that the kids need. Now that's not to say that we need to load them down with more weight. They're little, they can only carry so much weight. But it's really about volume. If we're out there camping, we're bringing things like sleep pads and those, while very light, just take up a lot of space. So as we began researching backpacks for our kids, we also were developing a list of requirements that those backpacks would need to fulfill. First on that list is that we needed a non-compartmentalized backpack. And what I mean by that is we really needed an outdoors backpack. We also need a backpack that they could grow with. Their bodies are changing. They're going to get taller. That means that their torso lengths are going to grow and they needed a backpack that was in some way adjustable so that it could grow with them physically. And speaking of physical growth, their interests were also growing. They were diversifying. So what started out as simple hikes then became longer hikes and then became hikes plus camps. And then they got into rock climbing. And now they're talking about you know alpinism and doing things in the fourth season and getting into snow travel. And all of those different activities require different types of gear. And you want to have a pack that is flexible enough that you can easily access the types of gear that you need for the types of trips that you're taking. We also wanted backpacks that were comfortable, not bulky. Then our kids also wanted a pack that wasn't, you know, cartoonish might be the way to put it. Like most kids, they're always wanting to do what the big kids are doing and what the adults are doing. And so they wanted a pack that looked like those packs. And then lastly, you know, if we're going to have a pack that is going to grow with them physically, if we have a pack that's going to grow as their interests diversify in terms of its ability to fit the needs, then we also needed a pack that was going to be durable to last long enough to meet those changing needs, to meet those changing bodies. So we needed a pack that was going to withstand the abuse that it was going to take over multiple years. So that's where we landed with the Deuter Climber 22 liter kids pack. Now while it doesn't check all of those boxes perfectly, it does check all all of those boxes enough and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. We're also going to hear from Connor and Caden themselves. While I certainly want to give you my opinion and give you my observation from our experiences, you should also hear from the kids themselves about their experiences and their observations and their pros and cons about those packs. So how are you guys doing? Good. How about you introduce yourselves? My name is Connor. Well how about we do it one at a time? My name is Cade. My name is Connor. So the first on that list of requirements was the truly outdoors pack. The Deuter Climber is a traditional top loader pack. That is that it's got you know, one large main compartment that can take your helmet, your water bottle, your sleep pad, other bulky items, uh, and you can put them in with additional clothing kind of stuffed around it. And it really can carry a lot of diverse items because it just has that one central compartment. But beyond that, it also needed to, as I mentioned, be a pack that the kids can grow into. Now, Deuter lists this pack as being appropriate for torso lengths between 10 and 17 inches. For those of you who aren't in the US, the rough middle point of that, 13 inches, is about 33 centimeters. So looking at this pack, again listed 10 to 17 inches, if we look at where the shoulder straps attach to the back panel, we measure from there to the middle of the hip belt, which really should be sort of the ideal point of where it would sit on your hips. If we take that measurement, what we get is 13 inches. So again, 33 centimeters roughly, and that's the ideal torso length for this pack. If we were to measure from the top of the back frame all the way to the bottom, you get 17 inches. And that's where that max comes from when Deuter lists the uh, 10 to 17 inch torso lengths. And then lastly, if you were to measure from the top of the shoulder straps to the top of the hip belt, you get 11 
inches. So I'm not exactly sure where the 10 inches comes from as they list the torso length from you know, 10 to 17, but I can, I can see where the 17 inches come in. And again, I see that ideal length of 13. Uh, you know, all that being said, while our kid's 10 inch torso length really from my measurements shouldn't fit the pack, the kids have been carrying them for three months and carrying them comfortably, and it does seem to uh, fit the bill. We just make sure we tighten that hip belt on their hips nicely. It takes actually a lot of load off of their shoulders, and it seems to carry pretty well at that 10 inch torso length. Now, another thing that you know, 10 to 17 inches as a continuum might suggest is a level of adjustability. Now, when you look at other packs on the market, oftentimes when they have really adjustable packs, what they're doing is they're taking the shoulder straps and attaching it to a separate component that then is Velcroed to the back panel. So you can lift that Velcro off and then move the shoulder strap uh, up and down at the top so that you're actually changing that length between the top of the shoulder strap to the hip belt. Now, the Deuter Climber doesn't have that level of adjustability, and so in some ways it's actually a little bit misleading when you see some of the, uh, the marketing and advertisements around the adjustability. That being said, though, it does have your standard load lifting straps and your adjustable straps on the uh, shoulder straps so that you can add in a level of adjustability to your torso length. And the way that you would do that is if you wanted to really lengthen the torso length, what you would want to do is pull that load lifting strap very, very tight and then loosen the bottom of the shoulder strap. And as you can see, you get this additional peak in the shoulder. So that's now going to be the top point where your shoulders are hitting the strap and you're lengthening the distance between the top there and the hip belt. And that's where you can get that you know, close to, as you can see, 17 inches of torso length. If you wanted to shrink it, you're going to do the opposite. You're going to release the load lifting strap and let that shoulder strap move downward. And then you're going to tighten the shoulder strap at the bottom. And that is going to create the minimal amount of distance between the top of your shoulder strap and the hip belt. And that's where you get closer to that, well, really 11 inch torso length. So what about you guys have told me that sometimes you, it's too tall, right? You can't put your head, you can't yeah. tilt your head back, right? This is the top of the mountain. Yeah, so you're walking up to the mountain, you want to look up at the top and you can't. Yeah. Cause it, it's a, I'm going to see how much um, there is left of, um, or, or to see, how, or to see if we got high enough to say it's a, it's a very good, big and very good accomplishment. <laughs> So beyond being able to adjust to them as their physical bodies change, there's also all these different activities that I've been talking about, so the camping and the hiking, and now the technical rock climbing, and, and the conversations they've been having with us about alpinism in winter, and all the things they want to get to in the future. So does this have the right features and functionality to allow us to carry the appropriate equipment you know, comfortably? And the answer is yes. Is actually, this is one of the places where the Deuter Climber excels. So besides being that sort of main compartment top loading focus. It also has this lid and the lid does have two different compartments. In the top compartment we typically put things like you know gloves, sunglasses, those things that you're taking on and off multiple times throughout the day. This is easy to get to without having to take your pack off. You just ask one of your climbing or hiking partners to say, hey could you get this out of the top of my pack. Now on the underside of that we have put our kids toiletries. Now, most adults will put things like keys, wallet, you know, sort of valuables in this under uh, compartment. Um, we want something that's still you know, used often enough that you need to be able to get to it, but maybe not quite as so often as their gloves, their sunglasses, and stuff that you're doing on and off, checking on and off all day. But, you know, kids go to a bathroom more than adults. Um, when they need to go, they need to go. So we put things like wet wipes, hand sanitizers, those types of things into this inside compartment on the lid. The zippers have very easy to pull um, tabs on them. You can grab with gloves. And I haven't had any problems, and the kids haven't had any problems with sort of snagging or difficulty moving those zippers. It does also have you know, side elastic pockets. So there's an uh, elasticity on the top. Um, 
like most people, this is typically used for our water bottles. So you can put a water bottle in there and you can see that it can carry a one liter water bottle very easily. And with the side compression straps, right now, we are tending to take those side straps, you know, thread it through the anchor between the lid and the water bottle, and then clipping it. And that just adds an extra layer of protection. So if one of the kids sits down and hits, you know, say the corner of a rock, you're not going to pop up and lose that water bottle, potentially roll down a hill, lose it entirely. So this is just a little extra security. Uh, and those side compression straps can also be used for other things. So, you know, if we look at, you know, moving from camping and hiking to something more like, you know, really alpine uh, and, and climbing, technical uses of the pack, those side compression straps can be used to hold things like snow pickets. Again, not something we're doing with the kids just yet, but something that's certainly on their radar that they want to be able to do, and we would like to not have to buy a new pack every time their interests change. So being able to put that picket into that relatively deep pocket and then clip that compression strap around it is going to secure things that you might need for you know, technical snow climbing, stuff like that in the future, which is not beyond the realm of possibility when they become you know, teenagers. There's additional features that allow us to uh, use this pack for technical applications. So if we look at you know, this sort of leash point right here, it's got a, a large loop in it, but then also in between um, these two actually separate leash connections, they're sewn together at points, but they're left open at points. And what that allows you to do is take the point of a trekking pole, run it through one of those holes, and then using this elasticized uh, strap here on the side, you can cinch that upper part of your trekking pole down, and now you've got your trekking pole stowed. It's also an axe attachment. So if you take an ice axe, again, if our kids are going to be thinking about getting into snow climbing, you run that through this larger loop and flip it over, you can now attach it to the pack. Another nice feature that a lot of uh, modern packs have is they actually have a sleeve here at the bottom of the pack. So as you take your ice axe, you can run the point through that sleeve before you turn it up. And now the sharpest part of your blade is not on the inside of the pack, it's also not on the outside of the pack where it could potentially rotate if you fall on your butt, you know, it could potentially cut you. So this is a nice added safety feature that a lot of modern packs have. And it's nice to see on a kid's pack, again, something that allows us to uh, make this pack last for longer and be used in more applications. If you like to use a uh, reservoir for uh, your drinking system rather than water bottles, it does have off of the climber's left shoulder an out point for your hose uh, to go to your, uh, your mouthpiece. And then, of course, within the main compartment of the pack itself, it has another elasticized pocket that you can put your uh, bladder into, and it has a Velcro attachment for the top to keep that bladder up so they get the right gravity flow down into your, uh, your hose. So it does come equipped with a compatible uh, bladder drinking uh, carrying system. On the back, you've got daisy chains, which we use simple paracord uh, to lash through. And that allows us to do things like carry light stuff that you don't mind carrying far away from your body on the outside of the pack. So things like our kids' sleep pads. That leaves extra room inside the pack to carry other equipment, whether that be helmets or camping supplies or a little bit of food or a bunch of extra clothing if we're going on an extended trip. Uh, it's nice to be able to get light items uh, outside of the pack, but also so, you know, kind of out of your way. Again, those lash points uh, on the daisy chain is what I use for my crampons. So not something that the kids are doing today, but eventually, again, if they're going to get into snow climbing, having that outer point where you can take sharp things like crampons and keep them outside of your pack so they're not likely to damage anything you have inside of the pack, being able to lash that to the outside is a very useful feature. Also, these things clearly get wet because they've been walking on snow, and so to not have them, you know, that snow thaw and melt and get water on your other equipment is a good thing. Lastly, besides these daisy chains, you've got these four sewn-in loops 
outside of the daisy chains. And these are designed for a uh, helmet carrying system. So Deuter makes these helmet straps. Actually, other companies make these uh, helmet carrying straps as well. It doesn't need to be a Deuter system. And these simply have hooks on them. And you can hook them to these attachment points, like I just uh, showed you. And that allows you to now carry your helmet outside of your pack. And that can be very beneficial. You know, with a 22 liter pack, you don't want something as bulky as your helmet taking up all of that space. And so having a simple attachment system that is easy to do, that kids can do themselves, uh, is really beneficial to saving space inside of that pack. So what do you guys like to carry in your backpacks? Sticks, water, glasses, um, jackets, climbing gear. A lot of stuff. What about camping gear? Camping gear. What kind of camping sweaters, gear? Sweaters, shirts. What else have you guys carried? Have you put your sleeping bags in there? Yeah, sleeping we have bags. What I like about it is I can store stuff on this back right here, like my covers, like um, those fish. Like One at a time. Like those, like those, you know, those thin mats for cold weather. Yeah, so the sleeping bags you put on the outside? Yeah, that's yeah. super helpful. And sometimes she. And, and on those little, mm -hmm. um, little like stuff right there. So, um, um, right now we just carry sticking them, but they're meant for ice, for carrying ice axes. This, ice, is, this is for ice hacks. Yeah, and this, these daisy chains on the outside, so you can strap things to the back, right? This one, those um, are helpful because they can keep them really pack, and, and, and they can fit, and they can fit. I wish I was able to carry two ice axes on that. In terms of other features for comfort, it's fairly minimalist. So it's got the Deuter Alpine back panel, which creates this channel that runs down the middle of your back and then across over both hips. And that's designed for airflow. It's keeping that part of your back away from the pack so that air can get in there and keep you cool. Now, our kids haven't had a lot of issues with sweating. In the, in the heat of some of our climbs, they have had some sweating, but actually not terribly much. And the air channel seems to be working pretty well. Beyond that, the shoulders and the lumbar have some padding, and that padding at its thickest points is about half an inch deep. And our kids haven't had any complaints about you know, chafing, rubbing, sore spots, anything pressing into them in uncomfortable ways. So the padding seems to be in the right spots and at the right depth. The shoulder pads are also about half an inch thick at their thickest points. And again, no complaints from the kids. While they certainly have noticed the extra weight of this pack compared to the 12 liter pack that they've been carrying, they have been carrying that without you know, pains of rubbing and chafing or cutting that thin straps can do on their shoulders. So the padding seems to be sufficient to distribute that pressure across their shoulder. And then lastly on the hip belts, the hip belts are considerably thinner, about half as thick. They're only a quarter inch thick at their thickest point, but they're not designed to cushion on top of your hip bone. They're designed to wrap around the ball and socket joint. So you can see there's actually this seam sewed into it, which helps that hip pad form around that hip joint and carry comfortably on that rounded bone. Do you guys find that the pack is comfortable to carry or painful pretty or pretty comfortable? comfortable. Is, yeah. Do the shoulder straps hurt or do they feel... Sometimes they hurt when, when this is... when, 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 now, when, when these right here are, are, not, are not tight enough. So that's usually when we don't have the hip strap tight enough, right, instead of the weights on your shoulders instead of your hips. Well, I'm going to get too much weight and so I just kind of fall. That, that guy mm -hmm. wants to go me down, the guy just pushes. Um, and the, the but do they rub on your shoulders wrong, or do they generally feel, like, pretty good? It's just they generally feel pretty good. good. They never have rubbed on us before. And how about the hip straps? Do you find when they, they're over your hip bones, do you find it rubs on your hips, or do you think it's pretty comfortable? Pretty comfortable. Yeah, it does not rub on our hips. Did your back get sweaty with it? Sometimes. Sometimes. No, we have but, one not, but not very often. Not very often, so it does a pretty good job of breathing through the air chambers. So when it comes to the aesthetics of the pack, uh, as I mentioned, they didn't want anything cartoonish. They didn't want anything with graphics. Um, and we agree. We would rather have something that, from an aesthetic perspective, is going to grow with them because their tastes are going to change. They might be in Pokemon today and be in Transformers tomorrow and be into space graphics you know, three months or to two years after that. But eventually, they're not going to like any of it. And so we would rather have a pack that's sort of devoid of all of that stuff and just has that classic sort of outdoor climb 
customers look than something that's going to fit a particular niche of an interest of theirs right now, but it's something that they're likely to outgrow in the future. Do you think they look cool? Do you think these are cool backpacks, yeah. or are they like, no, they're like little kid backpacks? No. They're not little kid. Our green backpacks kind of seem little kid, but I know they're Your green ones? Yeah, but these ones, yeah, it's a real, ba yeah, green ones are real backpacks, but these ones, they look like, and, well, they have all the features, right, of a regular adult backpack. And then as I mentioned in the opening, you know, what's the point of having a pack that can grow with them as their bodies grow, or having a pack that can carry different items as their interests change if that pack is going to fall apart in a year? It's not going to have time to grow. They're not going to have time to change interests. And while I certainly can't attest to, you know, three or four years worth of durability, I can attest to three months of really hard use. I've been doing a lot of rock climbing and scrambling with the kids lately, and, you know, the kids have a hard time on downhills, and um, on third class scrambles, they slip sometimes. And so this has taken a lot of rock abrasion. And this reinforced bottom is showing no signs of wear. There's no pilling, there's no scarring, there's no cuts. Uh, I'm not seeing any on the sides of either pack either. Really, the only thing we're showing for three months of hard use is more dirt than we would like to admit and a lot more food stains than we would like to admit too. But in terms of abrasion, you know, nothing on the outer, uh, the padding on the straps and the back panel and the hips are all holding up. There's no pulled stitching on any of the lash points. There's no pulled stitching on any of the compression straps. They're all double sewn. And this is the same quality of uh, construction that you would get in any adult pack. It's just in a smaller package. And so with you know, 210 denier uh, nylon construction, and reinforced bottoms, double stitching, uh, this this pack is holding up well, and we anticipate that it will continue to hold up well. They're pretty tough, right? I mean, like, you know, we've got the reinforced bottom, and you guys have been boot scooting down climbers' trails, right? And so you've been rubbing that all over the ground. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for taking some time and talking about your packs and for getting out and, and camping and hiking and climbing with me. I've been having so much fun. Yeah. Love you guys. Love you too. Okay. Love you. you. Bye. Bye. So that's it for our review. Thanks for watching. What do you look for in a kid's pack when you get your family outside? There's a lot of different brands and a lot of different packs for a lot of different uses. No one pack's going to be right for everyone. So please share a comment below and let us know some packs you've had experiences with. Let us know the pros and cons you've observed. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. If you want to be alerted every time Short Guys Betaworks releases a new video, please subscribe and ring that bell. And feel free to drop a comment below and let us know some content that you'd like to see. We're always looking for ways to help you get more out of the big outside.